Greetings, beloved. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God for this opportunity to share with you the word of the Lord today. On this blessed Sunday, I trust that He has carried you thus far and He will carry you further. We believe that it's the word that changes everything. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And we need the word in this day. We need encouragement in this day. We need spiritual direction in this day. And on that note, I say thank you to God for His grace and also for His mercy. Thank you for those that have tuned in. Amen. Blessings to you. Blessings to your household, your family. And my prayer is with you that God will keep you during this time. Our hope and our faith is in Jesus Christ. And for that I say thank you. Hallelujah. My message to you today is four words. Fight for your future. I'm going to say it again that it can actually resonate in your spirit and also in your mind. Today I'll be sharing the word with you on fight for your future. You have a future. You have a future in God. And with the challenges of the enemy, we need to fight for our future. The enemy is fighting that you cannot reach your future. Neither reach your promise. And my encouragement to you in regards to your future, you need to fight for it. You need to fight for it, brothers and sisters. Thank you for those that have also now tuned in. My word today that I'll be sharing with you is fight for your future. I'm going to read a portion of the word of the Lord and we will find our scripture reading in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 1. Reading the following. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, I want to read that portion with you. Daniel chapter 10 verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus king of Persia. Meaning we're dealing with a third year. It identifies the king. And it I also identify the empire that we are focusing on. In the third year of King Cyrus king of Persia. It deals with a revelation that is given to Daniel. The chapter 10. It also deals with a message that Daniel must receive. And it came to him in a form of a vision. Also verse 13 that I want to read with you. But the prince of the king of Persia, if we can just build it. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me, this is Daniel speaking, 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia verse 13 highlights the identity that Daniel actually has a warfare and a fight with the prince with the prince the king of kingdom of Persia he had this fight for 21 days thank you God our following scripture just before I read I honor Elder George Walters, thank you for being tuned in. Evangelist Neswell, thank you. Pastor Malcolm Kluter, thank you. God bless you all. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Fight for your future. That is what I need to say to you. And we are focusing on Daniel, who was a prophet. And this, what is unique about Daniel is that he was a prophet that was in captivity in Babylon. We know that the people of Israel were taken into captivity with a whole nation under the Babylonian kingdom. And Daniel was a prophet, but he was not any prophet or any type of prophet he was a unique prophet but he is also defined as a major prophet i would like to place emphasis on this captivity that daniel was placed in 
Many people were placed into houses, people were in captivity, but yet they were not slaves, they were in captivity. Brothers and sisters, there is a difference between captivity and bondage. In Egypt, the Israelites experienced bondage whereby they were slaves. But in captivity, they were ordinary citizens, just that they were overtaken by a different empire. That is what I'm talking about. Fight for your future. And while we're talking about Daniel, Daniel was, I'm going to say, he was a high esteemed, clever young man when he came and he got into Babylon. And God used him tremendously. And where God positioned him was very profound because he was placed in the palace close to the king. And because of his wisdom and his prophetic insight, God used him tremendously. While speaking about Daniel, uh, when we look at Daniel, the name Daniel means God is judge. That was his name. That was his Hebrew name. But when he got into the Babylonian captivity, they actually changed his name. And they called him, and I need to share this with you. They called him Belsasa, meaning protect the life of the king. So Daniel had a function and he had an occupation because his job was as a political person to protect the king. That was his name of his function. But the name of his calling was Daniel. I want you to realize right now while we're speaking about a name change. That the enemy always wants to change your name. Because if he can change your name, he can change your identity. He can change your purpose. And he can redirect your destiny. The enemy has a fight with your name. If your name is mentioned in the atmosphere, things change. When we reflect on the book of Acts, clearly demons said, we know Paul, we know that apostle. But these people trying to take out these demons, we don't know them. So even the demonic world knows our name. The demonic world knows the name of Jesus, whom has power. But the demonic world also knows your name. That's the reason why we need to pray. We need to be steadfast in prayer. Because when we pray, the enemy knows who's praying. It's about who's praying. And my encouragement to you, let your voice not be silent. Let your name not be silent. Because if the enemy hears your name, he even trembles. Because you have Jesus inside of you. Great is he that is in you, for he that is in the world. I'm still talking about names. When we mention a name, Nelson Mandela, what comes to our mind? It comes to our mind his identity, a prisoner in Robben Island. What also comes to our mind is his purpose, that he had to liberate his people from segregation. What also comes to our mind when we mention Nelson Mandela is a president. So within his identity and within his destiny, from a prisoner to a president. So when someone mentions your name, identity comes up when someone mentions your name your purpose is illuminated when someone mentions your name destiny speaks i'm here to encourage you your name has power and that's the reason why you need to fight for your future because the enemy is fighting you with your future with your name many people wants to badmouth your name but brothers and sisters i'm here to encourage you we are here to fight for our future Coming back to Daniel, Daniel was a prophet and as a prophet he started to study the word and looking at the prophecy of Jeremiah and he discovered number one that Jeremiah had a prophecy that this captivity that they are in the people of Israel is only 70 years. Reading the book of Jeremiah he understood 70 years this captivity was only 70 years. Why this became a problem to Daniel? That when he calculated, he saw that the people of Israel were in their 68th year of captivity. What does it mean? It means that there was only two years left. Only two years left before the captivity would end. And when this captivity ended, he wanted to know, God, if you're taking away this captivity, what is waiting for the people of Israel? Daniel was a prophet. He had a desire to have prophetic insight where God is taking his people. He started to pray. He started to believe. You must understand that Daniel in his occupation 
was a politician and God dealt with him on a political way you have to understand that his prophecy was connected to his ability I'm gonna say it again his prophecy was connected to his ability his occupation because why God gave him that prophecy was to function and to be a vessel for change your ability your ability that which God has placed inside of you is indeed connected to your prophetic destiny that's the reason why when you receive a prophecy the prophecy is for you and how you can be a vessel for that thing to change I'm saying it again that the prophecy God has given to you is for you but also through you that how can you change what God has given when God gave Daniel prophecy he understood that he needed to be I'm gonna say it a game changer God uses specific people Daniel's levels was different because each time after each persecution opposition and temptation he was elevated when Daniel came out of the lion's den he was elevated to a higher position understood understand that the magnitude of your calling calls for magnitude of problems let's give God a praise for that what I am saying that it serves as an encouragement to you right now God is using people God is using anyone and everyone just as God used Daniel in the Babylonian captivity God used Esther under the Persian kingdom also to liberate people I'm here to say to you that God can use you thank you Bishop Job thank you for being online Minister Roland God bless you brother Nigel Johannes God bless you thank you for being tuned in we are speaking on the fight for your future God can use anyone God can use everyone it's about your future reflecting back on Daniel Daniel had a dream about the image of the beast but I'm here to speak to you and just to go a little bit further while we're doing and while we're going into this word that when I read Daniel chapter 10 verse 1 it speaks about the third year King Cyrus under the Persian Empire you must understand that this world during that time there's actually four empires that Daniel had a prophecy about the first empire was the Babylonian Empire the Persian Empire which we can also call the Middle Persian Empire the Greek Empire and also the Roman Empire these four empires is what God gave to Daniel in a dream and in a vision and when we study history we can see how these four empires actually ruled the world when Jesus came to the scene it was the Roman Empire the Roman soldiers that crucified him reading the word of the Lord I came across two words which I want to share with you I read in Luke chapter 21 verse 24 while we're dealing with empires because these empires are controlled by the Gentiles Luke chapter 21 verse 24 I came across this word called the times of the Gentiles let me read this word to you and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled when I read Luke chapter 21 verse 24 when I speak about the times of the Gentiles we are dealing with what we call a political domination the political world controlled by the Gentiles whom we can see in this world all these countries that are controlling that is what we call the times of the Gentiles I also came across another word called the fullness of the Gentiles and to differentiate between the times and the fullness Romans chapter 11 verse 25 says for I do not desire brethren that you should be ignorant of this mystery which is Paul writing he says lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in dealing with the fullness of the Gentiles which is us and the this dispensation which we are living in we had the dispensation of the law but now we are living in the dispensation of grace the Bible declares for the law came by Moses 
but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Because we are in Jesus Christ, we are in a different dispensation. And we are in this season called the fullness of the Gentiles. That we may be, may be one in Christ. Why fullness of Gentiles? Paul is writing for them to understand that there's a times and there's a fullness. Things will come into completion. Coming back to the book of Daniel, which I want to put my focus. That Daniel had a fight with the prince. Keyword, the prince of the kingdom of Persia. The word prince is very profound when we read the book of Daniel. Because we get the prince of Greece. We get the prince of Israel. And Jesus is also called the prince of peace. This is a title that's associated to rulership. And we know that Jesus is the prince of peace. According to Isaiah 9 verse 5. I would like to share with you that the prince of the kingdom of Persia in scripture what we're reading. The question is, is it the person? I'm here to say according to Daniel, it was a force. A spiritual force. A demonic force. That was the prince of the kingdom of Persia. I'm going to use prince of Persia. It was a demonic resistance. Because the Bible says that Daniel waited for a word. But he had to wait 21 days. Because the prince of the kingdom of Persia was acting in a form of resistance was holding him that he cannot get the revelation the enemy is fighting for you he's giving you resistance but who knows that if you have persistence if you are persistent things will change i'm here to say to you that persistence persistence will break resistance i need to say that again to you you need to hold on you need to keep on because it is persistence Persistence that breaks resistance. Thank you, uh, uh, Brother Leslie Crowder, Evangelist Sean Evans. God bless you, Pastor Ronald Bailey. God bless you, Brother Damien Lucas. God bless you. Persistence breaks resistance. And Daniel was in the fight for 21 days. I want to share with you the revelation. We spend time on how long Daniel was in the fight. But I need to know not how long I am fighting. I want to know who am I fighting. Who is the devil in this life that I'm fighting. And that's the reason why I want to unlock in you. That you can understand who is the prince of Persia. Who is the prince of Persia. We're dealing with empires. Every empire. Every empire always came up through a war. And every empire fell through a war. There's always a warfare taking place. When there's supposed to be transition taking place. There's always warfare taking place. If there's a change that has to take place. Brothers and sisters, if you find yourself in a warfare leaders, you need to know there's a change taking place. There's a transition taking place. So from one empire to move into another empire, there has to be a warfare. I trust God that this word is blessing you right now. For those that have tuned in, I need to say to you, prophetically you need to understand. You need to understand that the Persian Empire had to come to an end. God was revealing to Daniel that the Persian Empire was coming to an end. Why am I saying that? That God was speaking to Daniel. Now the Persian Empire just started. Because in Daniel chapter 10 verse 1. In the third year of King Cyrus. But God was showing already that the end time is coming for this empire. Which is the Persian Empire. Which is keeping the people of God under captivity. It will fall. You must understand a few points about the Persian Empire, which I really want to explain to you. That the Persian Empire was a power of the past. The Persian Empire, I can't say in Afrikaans, I was a kracht van die verlede. The Persian Empire was a power of the past. And it was the power of the past that was standing in front of Daniel praying for his future but the power of the past was standing like a force that daniel had to wait 21 days to hear the message of revelation of his future hallelujah 68 years in captivity two years remaining to reach the 70 and the people of god needs to exit out of the babylonian 
Babylonian captivity. But the Persian Empire is standing in front. Not to give Daniel the revelation. I'm here to say to you. There is a strong force. Will holding things in your future. There is a strong force that is standing in front of. What you need to hear from God. And has been taking some time. Even 21 days. But I want you to know. That it's a power of the past. That is fighting you. Hallelujah. I thank God for grace and mercy. I want to move into this Persian empire. Persian empire. Because if you don't understand the enemy that you are fighting. You're going to fight a losing battle. Greetings Bishop Kate Brooks. Pastor John Humbayo. God bless you. Deacon Johan Pina. God bless you. All of you tune in. The Persian empire. Had adopted what we call a oriental culture. A eastern culture. When they came into being. When they came into rulership. They brought a different civilization. And this civilization was actually rooted in traditions. Rooted in past experiences. Because the Persian empire is a combination of the Babylonian empire. And also the Egyptian civilization. There was nothing new they could bring to that empire. Because they were rooted in the past. The empire that we have. The empire that we face. Is rooted in traditional beliefs which is hampering us not to reach our future in the Persian Empire there were no future thinking no one was thinking about the future because their glory was focused on the past and past civilizations that was the dominion of the kingdom of Persia I believe you understand what I just said and because they were rooted in the past this empire had to end because this empire that the people of God were under were under the past and God wanted to take out these people and prepare them a better future. God has prepared for you a better future. You see the Persian empire had to come to an end and God used a man by the name of Daniel to tap into the supernatural to get an understanding that this empire must end. The Persian Empire couldn't produce a better living style. Nothing. I'm here to say to you that spiritual forces are fighting you. And also fighting your future. I love the scripture that says, Old things has passed away. Old things. Old things has passed away. Behold, all things has become new. The fight that you have is between the old things. Yes. That's supposed to be passed away. An old empire that has to die. And behold, all things are become new. God wants to do new things in your life. But there is a raging warfare in the heavenlies about you, your life, your future, and also your past. Generational curses. Generational blessings. There is a fight. Believers, there is a fight about you. Job didn't know. Job didn't know that God had a conversation with Satan. All he experienced was trials and tribulations. But little did he know that there was a conversation in heaven about his future. We don't know what is here happening in the heavenly realm about our identity, purpose and destiny. That's the reason why you need to fight for your future. You need to pray. And whatever God has given you in the form of calling and gifting, pursue it so that it can be your strength, so that the strength can overcome the weakness in your life. I trust God for a miracle. I trust God for a miracle. I need to hasten with this message. There's something I need to say about your past. I want to use this acronym, which is P-A-I-N. The P deals with pain. The A deals with those that were against you. The S deals with scarcity, which means a lack. In your life, in your past, there were times that you had a lack. There were times that those were against you. You experienced pain, pain through this. And also the past. The last letter T is also toxic. If you think about it, that where you came from, what the enemy has done in your life. The enemy wants to bring the past back to the present. But I refuse it in the name of Jesus over your life. I'm here to say, a new empire is rising. A new empire is rising. And we need to be ready for it. We need to be ready for this transition that is about to take place. I'm here to say to you that the empire after the Persia 
was the Greece Empire or the Greek Empire. For those that understand the history, that there was a battle between the Persian Empire and the Greek Empire. This battle was for 130 years. There was no end because there had to be a transition where the Greeks had to rule. But God raised a man by the name of Alexander the Great. This man only fought the battle against Persia. And in 13 years he overcame them. He overtook an empire. I'm not saying winning a war. I'm saying an empire. Dealing with regions. Dealing with possessions. That is what Alexander the Great did. I'm here to say to you. Your gift has had acceleration. Your gift will give victory. What people were fighting for many years. When you will come on the scene. You will effect the change. You will bring acceleration. People won't believe it. The way you will do things. Because you have acceleration in your spirit. You have acceleration in your spirit. I'm here to say to you that God can give it to you. You must just believe that He is a rewarder. To those that diligently seek you. The Greeks had to be the next empire. I'm going to finish my teaching very quickly. If the Greeks... Oh, I need to say this. If the Greeks did not win the battle against Persia, the progress of this world would have had a setback for many centuries. If the Greeks would not have won the war against the Persian Empire, this for the word of the Lord to be written in Greek, I need to say this, there must be a future empire which must lay the foundation for you to accelerate on. So when Jesus came, he came, although he came under a Roman Empire, he came under the influence of the Greek. The Greeks actually wrote the word of the Lord according to the Bible. Even Hebrew people wrote. But I need to say this, that we can tap into this. The Greek literature was very important. If there was no Greek literature, we would have never known that God was a Logos. A Logos is a Greek word describing God and giving God an aspect. That's the reason why we say He is the Logos. He is the Word of God. He is the spoken word. He is the written word. If there were never a Greek language, we would never know that He was the Logos. If there were never Greek literature, we would have never know that time was divided into Kairos and Kronos. That's the reason why when we read in the Bible, we find that there was a Kairos moment. The Greek knowledge gave us that a Kairos moment. If there was no Greek literature, we would never have known that there is a difference between Logos and Rhema, the spoken word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Greek Empire gave us this knowledge. Believers, we are in a world of technology. Things are changing. There are some things happening in your life. And God is accelerating you in this dispensation. You will not be left out. You will not be in pause. I need to say this. If there was no Greek literature, we would never know that there was a word called agape, eros. Agape teaches me, it, it's about God's unconditional love. I'm here to say to you that this new empire is about to accelerate you. But there's an enemy fighting. There's an enemy fighting. There is an enemy fighting in your life. And I need to say this and I need to declare this. How am I going to get past this devil that I'm facing? How am I going to get past this 21 days? I need to get past. I need to get past it. I'm here to say to you, in order for you to break from one level into another level, you can only do it through a door. Open doors and close doors. Daniel was praying for an open door of his future. Therefore, your future is actually constructed in the framework of doors. There's a reason why specific doors must close in your life. But there's also another reason why doors must open. And there are some doors that you need to break into. You need to break into. The Persian Empire was a door that was withholding Daniel's revelation. And there is a power of the past. A door of the past that is withholding that you have to reach your future. You have to reach your future. The enemy is standing in front of a door to your next level. He's standing in front of it. And you are fighting for many years. God, when is this door going to open? I'm fighting this devil and I'm fighting this devil. And how many times do we know that the fight which we are fighting are unequal? I'm here but the demonic forces are there. 
But the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came, where Michael the archangel came, and he came to help Daniel, and he reinforced Daniel to fight this enemy, the Persian enemy. Michael the archangel, the war angel came to fight with Daniel to get his future. I'm here to say to you today, don't feel that the battle is unequal. God will send his reinforcement, his reinforcement in your life so that this battle can be equalized. I'm here to say to someone, God can do the change. God can bring the change and He's going to change and He's going to remove the force of Persia in your life. It's a fight, brothers and sisters. It's a fight in the demonic world. I'm here to say to you the size of your problems. Predict the size of your future. God is bigger than the size of your problems. So when God brought Michael on board, it fight was different because with His power, they overcame the kingdom of Persia. Sending Michael was resizing it. I'm here to say God is resizing it. God is resizing it. God is resizing it. I want to conclude on this. If Daniel had to wait 21 days to get this revelation, it speaks of the magnitude of this revelation. The weight of this revelation. It was big. It was huge. And when we deal with magnitude, let me help you. In terms of an aeroplane, if a smaller aeroplane has to take off, he only needs a small runway. Within a few minutes and within a few seconds, he will take off because it's a small aeroplane. But when you have a bigger aeroplane, Boeing 747, you need a longer runway to lift up that aeroplane with a cargo. The reason why you're still on the runway, because this is not any magnitude that is being lifted. This is God that is going to lift you in the name of Jesus. I'm here to encourage you. The reason why you're still on that runway, hoping to take off, because it's a cargo that's inside of you that carries a weight. And you need a longer runway. You need to endure two days, three days, four days, five days. The reason why, because of your magnitude. You say, God, why am I going through this? Other people are going through certain things very quickly. God, why is it taking so long? Why is there a delay of 21 days? I'm here to say, because of your magnitude. Daniel had a political magnitude. Daniel had a prophetic magnitude. You have a magnitude. You have a magnitude that God wants to elevate. I'm here to encourage you that God is going to give you breakthrough. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you under this word that you need to fight for your future. And there is a Persia, a past problem standing in front of you. A force and a demonic force that God wants to bring a change in your life. And I want to pray with you, my brothers and sisters, that we can trust God for a miracle right now. I'm here to say we're fighting for our future. Daniel, a statesman, a political influence, prophetically positioned for God to make a change. I'm praying right now that God will position people to speak the right things into the atmosphere for things to happen in what we are facing. And I'm trusting God is going to do a miracle. I believe He's going to do a miracle. And we need to pray together. And we need to pray together. Hallelujah. We trust in God. We trust in God. Man of God. Hallelujah. Well, and Christo Rex. God bless you. I want to pray with the believers and trust in God. For what He's about to do. For what change He's about to bring. Hallelujah. And we are trusting God. God, we give you glory. God, we trust you. There is no one like you. And we believe that you can do a miracle right now. God, I'm praying in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. This is your word. This is your revelation. And we are in a transition process, God. For an empire to change. For our future to change. I come against this force which is holding us back, Lord. I come against the force in the atmosphere that is holding us back, that is delaying God. We're praying in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against it. God, we're praying for your angels as reinforcement, Lord, to give acceleration in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name, 
God, I'm praying for a political scenery. I pray for those that are appointed. God, bring a change in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you will do changes as never before. I am praying for people tuned in right now. God, we are many people are uncertain and have fear. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this word will change. This word will impregnate future inside of us, God. We know that there's an enemy we're fighting. And God, give us the strength in this day. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. God, we're praying for victory. God, we're praying for victory. We're trusting you. We're praying for victory and we're trusting you. We're trusting you, God. I'm praying for your future right now. I can feel it. My brother, Brother Riza, hey, God bless you during this time, the month of Ramadan, holiness. During this time, we're fighting for our future. We're praying for our future. Our future is not in the hands of men. Our future is in the hands of God. That's the reason why your identity, purpose and destiny is so important right now. The enemy is fighting you in three ways if you don't know it. He's fighting your identity. He is fighting your name. People are bad-mouthing your name. People are creating a bad narrative about your name. I'm here to say to someone, your identity must be revealed. No longer are you standing back or having less confidence or say maybe that is not for me because you feel inferior. This is for you right now. You need to believe God because if you're not going to unlock your identity, no purpose will be in the earth no purpose is in the earth I need to say it to you God I'm praying for identity right now to be released in the atmosphere I'm praying right now for identity to release God hidden identities in the mighty name of Jesus God I'm praying for it right now to be released that identities are unlocked God, because we need a Lord, for the problems which we have, Lord. Unlock identities. Unlock people with potential. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for your purpose. Hallelujah. Purpose is the meaning to your life. Too long you've been feeling empty. You're feeling directionless. But it will be purpose that gives you direction. God, I'm praying for those whereby your identity is unlocked. But there are forces that are fighting purpose in your life. Forces, God, that is blocking for purpose not to be released in Jesus' name. I'm praying for those, God, to fulfill their purpose, to live out their passion, Lord. I come against the blocking forces, the person empires right now. We come against it in the name of Jesus, and we are locking purpose right now. Oh, hallelujah. People want to keep you behind because of your identity. Many people say that Nelson Mandela was a prisoner, but the potential was a president. He was locked up inside prison, but inside his prison being, there was a president growing. I don't know if you are locked down and what you face, but what's inside of you will come out. And when Nelson Mandela came out, he brought a change. That's the reason why before 1994, we speak about apartheid. But after 1994, we speak about post-apartheid. We speak about liberation. When you are going to be unleashed, when you are going to be unlocked, God is going to do a change. Your presence, your identity, your purpose, your destiny will separate time. People will say, before you and after you, there was a change. Oh God, I want to pray for destiny right now. I want to pray for destiny right now. I want to pray for destiny. You're going to reach your destiny right now. I prayed for your identity. I prayed for your purpose. Right now is your destiny. Mandela moved from prisoner to president. And if it can happen to him, it can happen to you. It can happen to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for destiny right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, there are blockers, people fighting that position, Lord, that calling for to be released. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, reposition for destiny in Jesus' name, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we shall reach our destination. God, I pray for those that have reached their destination. So they shall change, they shall stay in their destination. In Jesus' name. 
It's only people that have reached their destination that understand the purpose of identity and unlocking. Those that have reached their destiny are those that want more identities to unlock. And if there is a force in your life, if there's a force that you know that is blocking identities and purpose, you need to know those are the people that haven't reached their destiny yet. They haven't reached their destiny. I'm here to say, if you meet someone that has a desire for your identity to unlock and your purpose, they've reached their destination. Oh, I declare it over your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. This is my final prayer. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In this atmosphere, unlock identity, unlock purpose, unlock destiny. In the name of Jesus. God, no holding back. No holding back. It's your season to be revealed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh God, we worship you. God, we say thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. I know you tuned in. I'm here to say to you, identity, purpose, and destiny. Let it be in your life according to this word. You are fighting for your identity to be unlocked. You're fighting to be recognized amongst people that don't want to recognize you. You're fighting your purpose while other people wants to overtake you. But I'm here to say to you, but when you reach your destination, many people will feel the same. Destiny is a location inside of you where God is taking you. I say thank you God for your glory. I say thank you God for your mercy. In front of every powerful prophetic promise is a persisting problem. In front of every powerful prophetic promise for your life or for any person listening, there is a persisting problem. And we've prayed and we trust the God in the spiritual realm that we've overtaken right now the kingdom of Persia over your life. I trust God for grace. I trust God for mercy. Thank you to those that have tuned in. We are fighting for our future here right now. We're fighting for what God has destined in our lives. For what God wants to change right now. And we refuse the enemy to lock us down in our spirit. Because our identity right now is what needs to be unlocked. We're facing these challenges. That there are people that do not want to recognize you. Neither recognize what you do. Neither recognize what you've achieved. They're still fighting you. You have all your medals on your wall. You have all your certificates. But they still do not want to recognize you. Because it's you. I'm speaking to you today. They do not want to accept your identity. Of who you are. But I'm trusting God. That he's going to do a change in your life. And we believe that he's the one. That can do a miracle right now. Deacon Kirvin, God bless you. It's about identity, purpose, and destiny. What God is changing, what God is effecting in your life. And I want to say this to you. It's destiny right now. It's destiny. They may give you a fight, but they don't know that this fight is going to take you to your destiny. I do not want to change the word, but there was a storm raging with Jesus sleeping in. And they needed to wake up Jesus. The disciples ran and they were worried and they said, oh God, do you think why must this happen to us? You know what I've realized? They, and they woke up Jesus, which deals with unlocking identity. When they unlocked identity, Jesus woke up. The Bible says he spoke to the storm. He spoke to the storm. As the word he spoke to the storm and the sea called. When the identity is going to be unlocked, Nature will change. Things will change in your life as never before. I need to say this. Sometimes you don't realize the storm was an acceleration. During that time, there were no engines in boats. They could only go a specific speed. But the storm which they faced 
was an acceleration. When the storm was over, they discovered that they reached their destination. Sometimes we don't understand the storm. We don't understand the COVID-19 storm. There's some storms we don't understand. But as a believer, I believe that right now that the storm is accelerating us. Sometimes in a storm, you struggle to find direction because your focus is survival. But I'm here to say, although our focus is survival, when we're going to open up our eyes, we will find the storm is over. And we've reached our destination. We've reached our destination. We've reached our destination. It's unlocking. You are amongst people that do not want to see you who you truly are. And that's the reason why you need to praise and give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I give you all the glory and I give all the honor. And I pray that your anointing right now increase in Jesus' name. For those that have tuned in, for those that are listening. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for their identity. In Jesus' name, God, with the past have broken them, with the past have damaged them. I come in the name of Jesus and I pray for your Holy Spirit, Spirit of reinforcement, to be built inside of us. God, I pray for more people to believe in themselves right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, God. You're part of the body of Christ. You must have an identity, purpose. Oh God, we worship you, we praise you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. I can feel the anointing of God right now in this place. And I believe that this prayer and this declaration is touching you right now. God has given you the authority to make declaration, to make proclamation wherever you are. It's your identity. It's your purpose. And it's your destiny. It must happen to you. God, I'm praying. I say thank you. There's so much negative news that the kingdom and the force of Persia is giving people. But right now, I trust a different word. I trust God. I trust God right now. We're fighting for your future. We're fighting for your future. I think this is the, the final revelation I'm giving. And I'm declaring it right now of your life. Genesis. Then Isaac sowed in that land. And in the same year, I declare the same year, he received a hundredfold. He received a hundredfold. Then Isaac sowed in that land. And in the same year, he received a hundredfold. I am declaring the same year to you. Economists, educational specialists are writing and say this year is gone. Pastor Errol Arantza, thank you. I'm here to say it's not over until say God says it is over. People want to declare this year done. We cannot because in the supernatural we believe God can do a miracle. And we trust in God right now in your life. Then Isaac sowed in that land and in the same year he received a hundredfold. In the same year. God is going to bless you. The same year. The same year. God, I say thank you for this message said which you've given your vessel. I pray that this message will change those that have listened. For their identity to be unlocked. Amidst the opposition they face. Amidst the negative voices they listen to you. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this will be a season of unlocking God. In Jesus' name. I pray for purpose to be revealed. For this earth to be flooded with abundance. God, I know that if we step into our purpose, there will be no lack. I pray for those to step into their purpose, Lord. Not be withheld in Jesus' name. Oh God, I pray for destiny. That we shall reach it. That we shall reach it in the name of Jesus. Regardless of the time frame. Regardless of 21 days. God, I pray that we shall reach it in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we worship you. Great are you, Lord. We worship you, God. We lift up your name. There is none like thee, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the highest praise. God, you're great. God, you're great. Oh, hallelujah. I can feel his anointing right now in this place. Something is changing about your identity in the spiritual realm. Something is changing about your purpose. God is raising passion inside of you. Because passion gives purpose. And if you have purpose, you have power. 
I'm declaring power right now. Power in your life. Hallelujah. Power right now in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. You need to reach it. God, I pray for those that have missed. That they will never miss again in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those that feel they have a misidentity. Touch them, Lord. A must purpose and a must destination. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Realign, restruct, reconstruct right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. We give you praise and we lift you up. Thank you for those that have tuned in. God bless you in abundance. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We give you glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We lift up your name. Amen.